Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel. Peter likes ow, books. And today, I'm gonna do a holiday book haul. And I totally didn't expect to be doing this today. I thought, well, I'll probably do some kind of tag or do like an update, because I've already read like, I think like five books this month. So I'm powerhousing it. Listen, I have met my Goodreads challenge from last year. <laughs> last year, I read 62 books, and I am currently at 62 books, even though my goal was 100. So I don't think I'll be reaching that unless I read 40 books this month. But I was saying this in my vlog channel last night. So if you don't know, I have like three other channels, and one of them is a vlog channel, and I just kind of like randomly talk, and I talk a lot about books on there. I also have a new channel called Peterisms. Um, these are all linked below where I'm telling stories of my life. And actually, today's video is going to be... Um, a video where I read some of my mother's writing because she kept journals and she wrote a book that I wasn't aware of until she after she passed away. And so anyway, um, but on there I was talking about how like if you're bookish or I don't know, like maybe other people this doesn't bother, but like I'm like so upset I'm not gonna meet my Goodreads goal. This is the first year that I haven't re met my Goodreads goal since I've been doing it. And I'm very serious about my Goodreads reading challenge goal. Um, the first year I think I set it for like 30, and I read like, I don't know, like 40. That was not a very serious reading year for me. And then the next year, I set it for 40, and I hit 62 last year, and then this is my third year on Goodreads. I still can't believe that there was a day that I didn't know what Goodreads is. I'm like so weird about how often I get on Goodreads, and I'm like obsessed with it. Um, when my aunt passed away in January, we found that she had kept a whole bunch of these like little notebooks. I love these, and they're so cheap. And she would just write in there like favorite movies, movies that she wanted to see. And so it's kind of cool because whereas my mother kept like written journals, my aunt kept just like very, very small journals. And I started this one last night. And these are, I'm gonna start keeping one for Christmas and each holiday of all of like the movies, the songs, all the things I wanna do. And so I started this last night and I came up with a list of Christmas shows that I wanna see before. Christmas comes, because I believe in making the most of each holiday, which is why I'm doing a lot of holiday tags on this channel and talking about holiday books and doing a holiday haul today, partly because I was driving around last night and I was like, you know, there are some really good holiday books that I've listened to and then there are some that totally suck that I don't know that like I would recommend these to other people, if that makes sense. And I think it's like you want to find like, if you're like as Christmassy if I, as I am, if Christmas is the holiday that you celebrate, if you don't, I highly respect whatever holiday you uh, celebrate or none, if that's the case. But um, I think you want to find like the, the perfect book, right? So you want to know what some of my Christmas shows are? Frosty the Snowman, Smoky Mountain Christmas, Dolly Parton, Polar Express, I already watched that one. The first three I already watched. Christmas Carol, with Dis the Disney one, I already watched that. Charlie Brown's Christmas Carol, Se Season of Miracles, Ziggy's Christmas, Old Christmas Carol, on and on and on and on. So leave some of your favorites in the comment section below. Ah, I'm dropping stuff. So should we get right into this video? Okay, let me tell you what I have read so far that is Christmassy. I think it's only been one. And um, let me go to my reads here. Oh, hold on a second. Let's see, somebody left me a little comment on my Goodreads. I'm in my Goodreads right now. Jessica and Sarah liked my update for Christmas Blizzard. Thank you, Jessica and Sarah. And Rachel and two others liked my review of Lake Wobegon Days by Garrison Keeler, which I gave five stars to and I'll talk about it at the end of the month. And uh, Setina liked my update for the Christmas Blizzard. So the Christmas Blizzard is what I am currently listening to. And I will show you it in just a second because I'm listening to it on Audible. But it is, oh, here, I'll just show it to you here. Um, it's by Garrison Keeler, who also wrote Lake, Wo Lo Lo ha, Lake Wobegon Days. And it's about this billionaire, and he wants to go to Hawaii for Christmas, and his wife doesn't want to go because she loves Christmas, and she doesn't want to leave Chicago. It takes place kind of in the current times. And um, so he has a private plane, and it gets de derailed. It, there's a lot that leads up to it. It gets derailed, and then he's like in his hometown where he grew up, and there's a blizzard, and so he can't leave. Okay, so here's the thing. I absolutely love the story, but don't listen to it on Audible if you get it. It's read by Garrison Keillor, which is very cool, but they literally play Christmas music through the entire thing, and it's really hard to hear when you're like, if you, if you listen to it on headphones, it might be different, but I'm driving listening to it, and so it's like, and it's not just like soft Christmas music. It's like, it, depending on what the story is at the moment, it like changes. Does that make sense? And it's, 
it very much reminds me of like Lake Wobegon days, like the old news show that was on National Public Radio, but it, it interferes with, a, it, with an actual reading of a book. It's too much. So that is what I'm reading right now, but I would highly recommend it. The story is fantastic. Um, okay, so the next one I read was... I read The Christmas Box by Richard Paul Evans. Okay, so last year I read a Richard Paul Evans Christmas book that I actually didn't even finish until May, if you guys remember. I don't remember what it was called. It was about um, this guy that is like divorced and he meets this girl online. He doesn't meet her, but he starts reading her blog online and he wants to go find her and he's got till like New Year's to go find her. And, you know, it actually was really good. It wasn't bad. I mean, I wouldn't have given it like five stars. Like I thought it was fantastic. But it's no Debbie McComer. Like, her books, I've read her Christmas books before, too. And if you want a quick read that's kind of like an adventure and you don't really get to know the characters, Debbie McComer's great for that. She's just not my tea. Um, she's not my cup of Christmas tea. <gasps> okay, so anyway, I was explaining to Alex today what Wassail was. He was not very interested. <laughs> Do you know what Wassail is? Okay, so anyway, um, <clears throat> here we go, a Wassailing. So, um, <clears throat> but I had heard of the Christmas Box trilogy, or there are three, I think. The Christmas Box, The Christmas Letter, or The Letter, or something. I don't know. By Richard Paul Evans. And um, I honestly thought they would be really, really corny. It was fantastic. I listened to the audio version that was written by the guy. I can't think of his name. The one that was in, um, oh, shoot, The Waltons. And then he was uh, in the movie for The Christmas Box, too, which I really want to see. It was fantastic. It was so good. I listened to it on Audible. The book was like an hour and a half long. It was really short. Um... And I just, it was just very Christmassy, very much of what, like, the Christmas season is all about kind of thing. So, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. So, let's get right in here because I want to do, uh, so yeah, those are the other Christmas books I'm listening to. Then, I also bought for the Mini Emojithon, and I didn't read it, uh, What Light by Jay Asher. And so, this is another book that I have that I want to read before Christmas. Um, Sierra's family runs a Christmas tree farm in Oregon. It's a bucolic setting for a girl to grow up in, except for that every year they pack up and move to California to set up their Christmas tree lot for the season. So Sierra lives two lives, her life in Oregon and her life at Christmas, and leaving one always means missing the other, until this particular Christmas when Sierra meets Caleb and one life eclipses the others, and of the other. And so that, I'm sure there's some horrible tragedy that occurs, because there always is in Jay Asher's books, but that's that. And then I had seen this book recommended on my you know how like goodreads has those sponsored books i don't know how much they pay for those advertisements but anyway i've seen this book everywhere and actually last night i went on uh, audible and i went best sellers for christmas books i'm really doing this for people not just that like hauls but are like i want to read some holiday christmas books specifically christmas books um and so maybe this will help you a little bit but i got katherine anderson's the christmas room um and it is like number two the best seller ever of any Christmas book on Audible. I couldn't believe it. And it just literally just came out. Um, the beloved author of the Mystic Creek series delivers a novel of homespun good cheer as two families discover the joy of hope and redemption just in time for the holidays. Um, as summer gives away to fall in Rustler's Gulch, widow Maddie McClendon begins to have second thoughts about uprooting her life to move there with her son and grandson. Contractors have yet to break ground on their new house, leaving them, along with four horses, three dogs, and six cats, to live in a makeshift camp of trailers, tents, and sheds while a brutal Montana winter looms on the horizon. And it's basically just about a Christmas in the blizzard. And of course, I love any kind. If you know anything that's like a Christmas adventure, let me know. Because I want to read those kind of books. So. Then the next two were actually gifts. And I mentioned this in my vlog, I think. And uh, she like immediately, Jennifer, immediately, Jennifer. Oh my God, Jennifer, you have totally made my year. She turned around and uh, sent these to me from Barnes & Noble, and they're fantastic. And the first one is Charles Kingley's The Water Babies, A Fairy Tale for a Land Baby. And this is not necessarily a Christmas book, but it does, like, take place kind of in the winter, and the English countryside is where it starts. And it's about this boy that's a chimney sweep. Um, here, I'll read you the back of it. Um, I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. First of all, let me just show you. Like, I said on here the other day that it was, like... Do you see that? I mean, it's beautiful illustrations. The, and, and this book is absolutely gorgeous. Um, embarrassed by his grimy appearance in the presence of an immaculate little girl, 10-year-old Tom, an ill-treated London chimney sweep, promptly runs away. Diving into a river, he enters a magical underwater world where he meets wee creatures of the deep and learns about goodness, fairness, and right and wrong. Young readers will find themselves anticipating with pleasure the frequent appearances of such enchanting characters is as... Mrs. Do As You Would Be Done By, a fairy queen who takes many forms in the course of the tale. 
Char Charles Kingsley's Stories of the Virtue of Good Conduct and Useful Living was one of the English clergyman's many tales that were meant to draw attention to the evils of 19th century life, among them enforced child labor. From its poignant look at a, a young sweep's grim life to its intriguing philosophy on the nature of fairies, the book can be read and reread from childhood to old age. Immensely popular when first published in uh, book form in 1863, it was originally serialized. This beloved, cl beloved classic will captivate today's readers as much as it stirred imaginations well over a century ago. And it's a movie as well. And the movie is what I fell in love with. So, Jennifer, thank you so much. I'm so excited and just, yeah. And then, I, if I was excited about that, I am ten times more excited about what Jennifer sent me next. And that is John Mansfield's The Box of Delights. And every Christmas I always, oh my God, I didn't put it on my list. I have to put it on my Christmas list. Every Christmas I always um, watch The Box of Delights. I actually have the VCR version, but I watch it now um, on YouTube because they have the entire BBC series. I think it's like a four part series that they did. And this copy is just so beautiful, isn't it? Do you see that? And there's illustrations inside. And look at this. I mean, it really looks like a 1950s kind of like children's book. I love it. Um, Christmas ought to be brought up to date. It ought to have gangsters and airplanes and lots of automatic pistols. <laughs> Stranger things begin to happen the minute young Kay, Car Kay Harker boards the train to go home for Christmas and finds himself under ob observation by two very shifty looking characters. Arriving at his destination, the boy is immediately accosted by a bright eyed old man with a mysterious message. The wolves are running. Soon danger is everywhere as a gang of criminals headed by the notorious wizard Abner Brown and his witch wife, Sylvia Daisy Pouncer, get to work. What does Abner Brown want? The magic box that the old man has entrusted to Kay, which allows him to travel freely, not only in space, but in time, too. The gang will stop at nothing to carry out their plan, even kidnapping Kay's friend, the tough little Maria, jo Maria Jones, and threatening to cancel Christmas celebrations altogether. But with the help of his allies, including an intrepid mouse, a squadron of Roman soldiers, the legendary Hearn the Hunter, and the inventor of the Box of Delights himself, Kay just may be able to rescue his friend, foil Admiral Brown's plot, and save Christmas too. At once a thriller, a romp, and a spellbinding fantasy, The Box of Delights is a great English children's book and a perfect Christmas treat. The, and C.S. Lewis says, It is a unique work and will often be reread. The beauties, all the delights that keep on emerging from the box are so exquisite and quite unlike anything I have ever seen elsewhere. I mean, C.S. Lewis commented on I mean, this book is so fantastic, you guys. Well, I have never read the book, which is why I'm so excited. I have only seen the series. So, well, the movie, as I call it. So thank you, Jennifer. Those books were absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, wonderful. I mean, it totally made my Christmas. Okay, so then I want to get into uh, what I still have on Audible that I bought. <laughs> I went shopping on Audible. I need to stay off of Audible. I'm like spending way too much money. So I'm currently listening to The Christmas Blizzard. I then bought The Christmas Train by David Baldacci, which I read years and years and years ago. And I remember I read it when I like worked a third shift, like... So I used to be a supervisor in a treatment facility just for like a year, one year. And uh, I had somebody call in sick like on the 23rd of December. And I had like nothing to do on third shift except for just sit there. <laughs> and so I went and I bought this book on the way there. And I sat there and read the whole thing. And I remember being very like, it was like an adventure, like a Christmas adventure. And I loved it. So I just got the Audible book. I thought, well, you don't remember what it's about. And then um, I also bought the, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera because I said I want to listen to that on Audible and Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Penborough, which is the Audible mystery of the year that they picked. And I think it was also in the Goodreads pick. Um, and then I also bought Jacob T. Marley by William Bennett, Wishing and Hoping um, by Wally Lamb. And I think I mentioned that on here the other day. Just so if you guys are interested, I've also recently bought Rabbit, an autobiography, Station Eleven, Artemis, Renegades, and yeah, that's it. So I have so many books. Those aren't Christmas books, but I have so many Christmas books to read um, that I think this should keep me going until the holiday is here. And um, I just want to be alive with this Christmas spirit. So do you guys have favorite Christmas books? I probably will, I already own it. Will at some point read A Christmas Carol too. It's very, very short. Um, I also love the Tr Truman Capote books, um, like A Christmas Memory. If you ever saw the movie that was done with Geraldine Page, it was fantastic. Um, but let me know what your Christmas favorite books are below and, um, what your favorite Christmas movie is. One book, one, uh, show and leave that below. I mean, you can leave a lot more if you want to. So I hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday season and I will talk to you later. I love you. Bye.